Okay, and welcome back. This is for students of math for business and finance and students for math applications. And we're continuing with chapter two drill problems, the odd numbered uh, problems that were assigned. And we stopped on um, 2 21. Um, so now let's pick up with 2 23. Okay. It says multiply the following and reduce to the lowest terms. Do not use the cancellation technique for these problems. So by not using the cancellation technique, which for me is a given, okay, I, you know, because in not using the cancellation technique, all you're doing is just working with larger numbers. And remember, we try to use as small numbers as we possibly can, but um, I think what they want to do is, in this problem, is have you be able to reduce to the lowest terms. So by not using the cancellation technique, all we're going to do is we're just going to multiply the numbers straight across and then reduce. All right? And in the next problem, you'll see that we will use the cancellation technique, which will try to uh, reduce everything, and then we'll multiply. All right? So um, it's either do the work beforehand or do the work afterhand. But you always try to stay away from using bigger numbers as much as possible um, because it, it just creates for more confusion and a lot of unnecessary work. All right, so um, 5 times 3 is 15, and uh, 6 times 8 is 48. And we can reduce that because 3 can go into 15 5 times, and 3 can go into 48. 16 times. We can't reduce 5 sixteenths anymore, so that's our answer, 5 sixteenths. All right, problem 225. You multiply the following and reduce to lowest terms again, but this time use the cancellation technique. All right, so let me rewrite it here. So 4 tenths times 30 sixtieths times 6 tenths. Okay. The idea behind the cancellation technique is you're trying, obviously, um, you uh, try not to reduce within the fraction itself, even though you could here. Um, you know, if I reduce this by two, that would make it two fifths, but um, that's reducing, it's not canceling, okay? Uh, or not using the cancellation technique. And using the cancellation technique, what we're doing is we're looking at numerators and denominators in a pair, okay, not across all three. And um, in essence, yeah, we're reducing, uh, canceling, per se, um, in order to be able to uh, work with smaller numbers. So let me work through this here, and you'll see what I mean. Okay, I start out with four. Now, I'm not going to go 4 into 10 here, into the same fraction, but I'm going to look at the other fractions. Can 4 go into the 60? Yes, it can, 15 times. So I'm going to, 4 into 4 goes once, and 4 into 60 goes 15 times. Okay. All right, the 10, can the 10 go into 30? Yes, it can. All right. So 10 into 10 goes once, 10 into 30 goes 3 times. Um, Can uh, 6 go into 15? No, but 3 can go into 6 and 3 can go into 15. So if 3 goes into 6 2 times and 3 into 15, that's 5 times. Okay. And I can't reduce any more. 3 can't go into 10, 2 can't go into 5. So now all I do is I'm just going to multiply across. So 1 times 3 is 3 times 2 is 6. And 1 times 5 is 5, times 10 is 50. And uh, can I reduce that even further? Well, yes, I can. 2 can go into 6 3 times, and 2 can go into 50 25 times. Okay? And so my answer is going to be 3 and uh, 20, uh, 3 25 Now, um, I'm going to point out that this problem could have been worked in um, uh, different fashions, okay? There's more than one way to do this. Um, so let me show you a, another way. I mean, it's basically doing the same thing, but it's a matter of what combinations you're actually going to be using, okay? So, and again, it's just a matter of making things easy, all right? 
Okay, remember I had started up here, started with the 4, and went into 60. Okay. Um, what I could have done is I could have went and, and just eyeballing, okay, I could have went and said, okay, 6 into 60. Okay, so that's 1, and that makes that 10. 10 can go into 30. That's 1, and that's 3. And I'm left there, okay? And I can then take... 4 times 3 is 12, times 1 is 12, 1 times 10 times 10 is 100, okay, and now you see, you know, see the difference in my number here, okay, I have 12 over 100 and uh, versus 6 over 50, right, well, I know 12 can't go into 100, but I know that 4 can go into 12 and 4 can go into 100, right, so that would still give me 3 over 25 as my final answer. Right? But notice how I did it slightly different, and I ended up with a different number. Both ways are right. It's just a matter of how much you're going to cancel. Now, I could have also done it a third way, so let me show you that. You know, these are just permutations. They all end up with the same thing. There's no right or wrong to this, okay? The, the right answer is 3 25ths. That's all that really matters. But how you go about getting there is kind of up to you. Now, I could have gone and said, okay, um, I'm going, since this is 4 tenths, I could have reduced this to the lowest terms first, okay, and made this 2 fifths because 2 can go into 4 2 times and 2 can go into 10 5 times. Now, I could take the um, 2 into 2 goes once and 2 into 60 goes 30 times. And notice that 30 over 30 is 1. Right, so I could reduce that to one. Right, and now what I'm left with is um, one times one times six is six, over five times one times ten is fifty, and notice that's the same as this, but I arrived at it differently, and I reduced that to three twenty-fifths. Now I've showed you three different ways of doing this, and actually there's a fourth way to be able to do this, but I'm not going to go through it. You get the idea. There's no right or wrong way. The idea here is is cancel out as much as you possibly can, to reduce as far as you can, um, and then uh, you end up with, uh, you know, you end up with your uh, a fraction, and if you have to reduce to the lowest terms you can. Notice, and I'm going to use a uh, do this, I could have stopped there and I just and just glancing at it, two can go into six three times and two can go into ten five times. Okay? So now if I had one times one times three, that gives me three and five times one times five gives me twenty five. So in doing it this way I could have actually gotten immediately right down to three twenty fifths without having to reduce. In other words, I didn't reduce as I didn't cancel out or reduce as much as I possibly can, and that's why I ended up with 6 50ths instead of 3 25ths, because I didn't do that. But the point being here is, is that you cancel as much as you possibly can, and then if you end up with uh, a fraction that can be reduced, then you reduce it to its lowest terms. Okay? All right, next problem. Okay. Divide the following and reduce to the lowest terms. Use the cancellation technique as needed. All right, so I have uh, 12 ninths divided by 4 over 1. Okay, so remember, um, oops, I'm sorry. Yeah, divided by 4 over 1. Okay, now in this problem, you know, we don't divide fractions. Okay. In order to get around dividing those fractions, what we do is we end up multiplying. But in order to multiply, one of the theories or uh, tenets is that um, we end up inverting a fraction. So if I, what do I mean by that? Well, if I have four, okay, that was a whole number, right? There's the whole number. And we rewrite four as four over one to make it a fraction, okay? And that represents the same exact thing. Now, because we're dividing, instead of the when we have a division, what we want to do is we really 
to make things easier, we end up by multiplying. But to multiply, we have to invert, meaning flip it upside down, so that 4 over 1 becomes 1 over 4. Okay, that's the inversion right there. Okay, so kind of like notice that as uh, maybe as a visual cue that that's times. Okay, so if I have times, I end up with 1 over 4. All right. So knowing that, now I can rewrite the problem as 12 over 9 times 1 over 4. That's the same thing. It's a, it's a property, it's a theory of, of math that when I want to divide a fraction, I can multiply and I invert the fraction. And that allows me to be able to do the problem. So um, I can reduce here. All right, 4 and 4 goes once, 4 and 12 goes 3 times, so 3 times 1 is 3, and 9 times 1 is 9, and that can be reduced even further. Uh, 3 and 3 goes once, and 3 and 9 goes 3 times, so my answer is 1 third. Okay, All right, let me quickly run through that again. I'm going to erase here and run through it and then that'll be the end of this video so if you want to stop right now you can but if you want to listen to it again that's fine um, i'm going to do it relatively quickly here All right 12 ninths divided by four um, four is a whole number can be rewritten as four over one that's the same as four okay so now if we rewrite this, we have 12 over 9 divided by 4 over 1. Well, we don't divide using fractions the way we normally do. Instead, what we want to do is we want to do the inverse of it, the opposite of it, which is multiply. But when we multiply, in order to multiply by a, uh, in order to get the multiplication properties, right? Since multiplication is the opposite of division, we invert the fraction. We turn it upside down, okay? So that we take what's in the numerator and put it in the denominator, and what's in the denominator, right? We put it in the numerator. What's in the numerator, we put it in the denominator. What's in the denominator, we put it in the numerator. So one over, I'm sorry, one over four. That's the inverse of it the opposite, right? 4 over 1, same as 1 over 4, when we invert. And as a, a mental device, notice that that's right there. That looks like a multiplication sign. That's a hint, a way to try to remember that. So whenever I'm going to divide by a fraction, I invert it by multiplying and, and uh, flipping the numbers around. So now I end up with 12 over 9 times 1 over 4, and I try to reduce, cancel out, so 4 into 4 goes once, 4 into 12 goes 3 times. I can either do the math like I did before, or I can even cancel out it further here. 3 into 3 goes once, 3 into 9 goes 3 times, and so 1 times 1 is th 1, and 3 times 1 is 3. My final answer is 1 third. Okay, so that's it, and I will see you in the next video for uh, problem 2-29.